Shalom. I want to give all the praise, honor, and glory to Yahweh, Bahasham, Yahweh Shai, Bahasham, Rakhal Kodash. Yahweh being the name of the Heavenly Father, whom the world ignorantly calls God, the Holy One of Israel, in the name of His only begotten Son, Yahweh Shai, whom the world ignorantly calls Jesus Christ, in the name of the Holy Spirit. Double honors to the apostles and the elders of Great Millstone, peace and mercy to the house of David, those men that are doing His work in sincerity and truth, and uh, the one third of you uh, Israelites, uh, the men, women, and children, you so called blacks, Native Americans, and Hispanics that are uh, scattered across the four corners of the earth. Um, believe in hope and helping and, uh, in sincerity and humility to you all. I say shalom and greetings and Lord willing, this lesson is edifying through the spirit. All right. So um, I want to talk quickly on about the tribe of Manasseh. All right. Uh, specifically the half tribe of Manasseh, because so many times, you know, the thing is you'll read the scriptures, you know, but some things you just kind of overlook and it's spiritual because what is Manasseh's name in uh, Hebrew? All right, it's Manasseh, which means made to forget, right? And so, uh, doesn't mean that the beautiful part about it, though, even though that's their name, their name comes from because uh, Joseph uh, was made to forget his toil and his torment and uh, his captivity, right? But uh, nonetheless, they're not going to be forget forgotten among on Salvation Day. They're not going to be forgotten of the twelve tribes of Israel, which are these people today. Or your so-called Cubans, okay? But I, I'm not specifically talking about the tribe as a whole, even though in part I will. But I mainly want to talk about why are they called the half tribe of Manasseh? Because you'll read that you'll read through scriptures throughout um, uh, Joshua, throughout Numbers, throughout um, Chronicles. And, you know, you you keep hearing half tribe of Manasseh, half tribe of Manasseh, and the party needs to click. Like, damn, what happened to the other half? You know. And so I, the reason I have this, uh, I'll explain why I have the face paint on this individual here. And by the way, so-called uh, Cubans, they can range uh, dark in complexion too, to light in complexion. I, I'll just go back to Hosea, you know, to uh, get, uh, brothers already know what, what, which one I'm talking about. But, and it's not even to talk about their skin color, but it's just for edification for those uh, Israelites who come around and then they eventually understand that it's not about their skin color, but about their ethni ethnicity. You know, it's very important. But this is Hosea 7 and 8. It says Ephraim, but we know Ephraim is technically uh, Manasseh's brother. But Ephraim is speaking about the whole northern kingdom. You so-called Hispanics, so-called Latinos, you so-called uh, Native and Seminole Indians. Right. It says Ephraim, uh, he has he has mixed himself among the people. Ephraim is a cake not turned. Right. So meaning they're going to range in dark in complexion to light in complexion as if a pancake on a stove is left one side can be very white the other side can be very dark you know and so um i just wanted to get that but let me start uh hold on salakia let me start i'm gonna go to the book of uh the book of numbers let's start there the book of numbers the 32nd chapter uh this is numbers 32 and i think i can start at 33 I was in numbers 31. Numbers 32. And actually, this chapter is a vital chapter. If you get the time to read this chapter, I actually I need to start up because I can't just jump to the point. It, it needs to, I gotta have some uh some base uh foundation for this. Okay. Uh I start at one. This is numbers 32 and one. I'm gonna i I'm probably gonna read down to about uh six. I'm gonna skip around. I'm going to skip around a bit. Numbers 32 and 1. Now the children of Reuben and the children of Gad had a very great multitude of cattle. And when they saw the land of Jazer and the land of Gilead, that behold, the place was a place for cattle. The children of Gad and the children of Reuben came and spake unto Moses and to Eleazar the priests, unto the princes of the congregation, saying, Adaroth and Dibon and Jazer and Nimrah and Heshbon and Elielah, and Shabam and Nebo and Beon, even the country which the Lord smote before the congregation of Israel is a land for cattle, and thy servants have cattle. Wherefore said they, If we have found grace in thy sight, let this land be given unto thy servants for a possession, and bring us not over Jordan. So at this point, the Gadites and the Reubenites were like, We got a lot of cattle. This is a, a good land for cattle and sheep, and they want to dwell. And that they want that to be their land of possession because the Israelites knew that they would receive an inheritance of land except the Levites, all right, for a possession. And they wanted that portion of land. It says, um, and most, but they knew they had to go to war as well, right? 
It says, uh, and Moses said unto the children of Gad and the children of Reuben, shall your brethren go to war and shall ye sit here? So he's like, hey, man, your uh, your brothers and sisters are supposed to be going to war. Why are you why are you going to uh, stay here and not fight? You know, what I mean, y'all just going to sit back while your brothers are out there fighting, you know, and so this could have seemed like a cowardly thing. But you got to understand the whole you got to understand the whole um, the whole story. Right. It says, and wherefore discourage ye the heart of the children of Israel from going over into the land which the Lord have given them. So you like, y'all just going to stay here and y'all going to make everybody else get discouraged, man. Are you going to make everybody else think we not fit to fight because y'all want to just sit here and chill? It says, thus did your fathers when I sent them from Kadesh Barnea to see the land. For when they went up to the valley of Eshcol and saw the land, they discouraged the heart of the children of Israel that they should not go into the land which the Lord had given them. And the Lord's anger was kindled the same, kindled the same time. And he swore, saying, Surely none of the men that came up out of Egypt from 20 years old and upward shall see the land which I swear unto Abraham, not unto Isaac and unto Jacob, because they have not wholly followed me. Right? Because during that time, the Lord killed uh, everybody who was 20 years old and up because they had to, they were too dumbstruck on uh, Babylonian ideals. E I mean, excuse me, Egyptian ideals. So the Lord needed to shed that off and bring in a new generation of understanding. And that's where we are now, ultimately. It says, save Caleb, the son of Jephunneh, the Kenizzite, and Joshua, the son of, Mon, son of Nun, for they have wholly followed me. Right. Caleb and Joshua were mighty men that followed the Lord that wanted to go up and do the work and fight for his for his name uh, that were under that un, under that age of 20. They were young men. It says, and the Lord's anger was kindled against Israel, and he made them wander in the wilderness 40 years until all the generation that had done evil in the sight of the Lord was consumed. And behold, ye are risen up in your father's stead and increase of sinful men to augment that the fierce anger of the Lord toward Israel. Right. So they they, they had um, their same behavior. You can't be like your forefathers. We're expecting men to, to stand up for the Lord. OK, um, it says, for if you turn away after him, he will yet again leave them in the wilderness and ye shall destroy all this people. And they came near unto him and said, we will build sheepfolds here for our cattle and cities for our little ones. But we ourselves will go ready armed before the children of Israel until we have brought them unto their place. And our little ones shall dwell in the fenced cities because of the inhabitants of the land. We will not return unto our houses until the children of Israel have inherited every man his inheritance. And see, that's what a brother is supposed to do. So Gad and Reuben was like, hey, now nah, we ain't going to leave y'all astray. We're going to come and fight with y'all. You know, we can leave our kids and our, fa our wives and uh, the sheep here. But we're going to come and fight with y'all because that's what a brothers do. A brother doesn't leave his brother out to fight. Okay. Um, so they were ready to go. So now um, this is Moses basically goes on to tell him, hey, all right, if y'all do this thing, if y'all go up and fight with us, this is going to be y'all land. But if you don't, the Lord's going to destroy y'all ultimately. All right. So now I can jump down. Um, I can jump down to verse 29. And Moses said unto them, if the children of Gad and the children of Reuben will pass over with you, Jordan, every man armed to battle before the Lord and the land shall be subdued before you. Then ye shall give them the land of Gilead for a possession. It says, but if they will not pass over with you armed, they shall have possessions among you in the land of Canaan. All right. It says, and the children of Gad and the children of Reuben answer saying, as the Lord hath said unto thy servants, so will we do. We will pass over armed before the Lord into the land of Canaan that the possession of our inheritance on this side, Jordan, may be ours. And Moses gave unto them, even unto the children of Gad and to the children of Reuben and unto the half tribe of Manasseh, the son of Joseph, the king of Sihon, king of the Amorites and the kingdom of Og, the king of Bashan, the land with the cities thereof in the coast, even the cities of the country round about. So now we get this split of the half tribe of Manasseh, right? This is where it took place because uh, really they, they Really is what happened is when they were going up to fight, half of that tribe stayed back. Half of the tribe of Manasseh stayed back to dwell in that land. Okay? But only half of the tribe were ready to go and go and bang, man. You know? And ultimately, that's really what was happening. You know? And this is all set up for, for prophecy. And this is all set up. Uh, see, you know, that's why certain things we got to set up, understand about the Bible. That it's set up for the Lord's work and the Lord's will. Right? So the Lord might have had a half of the men go and fight so that he could scatter the other half in another direction, right? Because the Lord, it says we'd be scattered amongst the four corners of the earth, you know? But half of the tribe were going to fight, man. This is 1 Chronicles uh, 12 and 37. 
It says, uh, and on the other side of Jordan, actually, let me read 1 Chronicles 5 and 18 first. Let me read that one first. 1 Chronicles 5 and 18. It says, the sons of Reuben and the Gadites and the half tribe of Manasseh, a valiant men able to bear buckler and sword and to shoot with bow and skillful in war, war were four and 40, 40,703 score that went out to war. You see, so these were the, uh, the, the, with the sons of Reuben, the sons of Gad, there was a half tribe of Manasseh that was ready to fight with him. And so that's why I have this picture with this seemingly war paint on, right? Because in his spiritual that I found this picture of a, a, a so-called Cuban with a, a half his face on, which we know is witchcraft in that, but it was spiritual in this instance, right? Because they were ready to go fight. They were ready to go fight half of their tribe, man. Okay. And, um, you know, uh, elder, elder Kazak, um, I know he doesn't like the, the term elder like that, but elder Kazak out in Mississippi, he did a Lydia, a uh, lesson about two or three years ago about, uh, Cuba, right? And Cuba in, uh, Hebrew is, uh, Kwawaba or Kwaba, which means a dwelling place or a large tent or a great place, right? And in the scriptures, we know it says Joseph shall be a fruitful bow, right? There are so many things about these scriptures that let you know that these are coming to life. But Cuba is also the largest island of the West Indies, right? So their name is suitable. Their name is fitting to who they are, right? But these, uh, you know, the, half of that tribe was was bangers, man. And we know this because we got a, we, we were at camp. This had to be about three or f about three years ago. Um, there was a, a, a Manassite. He came up, he told me he, had, he was in the war and he got all of these guns at home, you know, all this kind of stuff. And we was like, hey, yeah, you, we know he definitely Manasseh, man. Look how he's acting. Look at his behavior. You know, but the thing is, he's doing that carnally. You got Manassites now that are, are powerful men that are fighting for the Lord. That's really what it comes down to. Are you, you say, hey, that, uh, are you one of those Manassites that, that, were, that stayed and chilled and didn't serve? All right. Or are you one of these ones that's going on? You fighting for the Lord, man. All right. All, at the end of the day, all Manasseh is going to be in the kingdom. But are you one of the ones that are fighting? Are you the ones that are putting your uh, your hand to the plow and fighting for your how about Shemuel Shai? This is First Chronicles 12 and 37. And this goes into all of the tribes on this one uh, about who were going to the uh, war. But uh, verse 27 specifically about Manasseh, Gad and Reuben. And on the other side of Jordan of the Reubenites and the Gadites and of the half tribe of Manasseh with all manner of instruments of war for the battle. And hundred and twenty thousand, all these men of war that could keep rank came with a perfect heart to Hebron to make David king over all Israel, and the rest of also of Israel were of one heart to make David king. Right. So this is multiple times that you're hearing about the half tribe of Manasseh going up to fight against um, against other nations, man. You know. But this is just the spirit of the Lord uh, that He wanted on this the half of the tribe. You know. Uh, but let me get J Joshua thirteen. In verse 29, it says, um, And Moses gave inheritance unto the half tribe of Manasseh. And this is the possession of the half tribe of the children of Manasseh by their families. And their coast was from Manahim, Mahanaim, all Bashan, all the kingdom of Ar, king of Bashan, and the towns of Jair, which are in Bashan, three score cities, and half Gilead, and Ashtaroth, and Edre, cities of the kingdom of Og and Bashan, were pertaining unto the children of Machir, the son of Manasseh, even to the one half of the children of Machir by their families. These are the countries which Moses distribute for inheritance in the plains of Moab on the other side of Jordan by Jericho eastward. All right, so hey, the, he was dividing up the land, dividing the spoils. And the half tribe of Manasseh were receiving all of these things because of their promise that they made to uh, Moses and their promise that they made to Yahweh Shai to fight for his glory and to fight for uh, their land and to fight for their brothers, man. You know, so all of these things are important. But you modern day Cubans, man, y'all come from a mighty lineage, you know, being Hebrew Israelites. Hey, and that, uh, that word, because uh, originally that land, they, they tried to say they were before they were called Cubans, they were called Tainos, right? The Taino Indians. You have. Uh, so-called uh, Ephraimites that will say uh, they're Tainos, right? And that's because, of course, there was a lot of mixing among the people going on, you know. But don't be surprised if you, you some of you Gadites might be might be uh, Manassites and vice versa and Reubenites, right? But um, Taino Indian goes into uh, it's a it's a compound word which really uh, Tawab I'm meaning good people, 
right? And how are they good people? Because these are the people of the Lord. These are the people of Yahweh Bashim al Shai. But now those that are really serving him are the ones that are coming back in righteousness, man. So, hey, Lord willing, this lesson was edifying. I want to give all the praise, honor, and glory to Yahweh, Bahasham, Yahweh Shai, Bahasham, Rachakadash. Double honors to the apostles and elders of Great Millstone. Peace and mercy to the house of David, the elect. Until next time, Shalom.